Peace and love, family. Peace and love. It's your boy Chris and Lightning coming back again with some more spiritual fiddles. And today I'm going in on deities on your ancestor altar. Ooh, this is a good one, family. This is a good one. This is needed, family, because I get a lot of questions about, is it okay to put deities on your ancestor altar? You know what I say? Your altar is nothing more than a physical representation of your spirituality, and you can do with it as you please. Whatever you want to do, it's cool for you. You're winning. There are no rules. If you don't want to, don't. If you do, do. Me, I do. I'm a doer. I like to combine all the energies on my altar, but that's just me. We have about nine altars in our in our crib, about nine different altars. We have, I have my ancestor altar. My wife has her ancestor altar. We have a power altar. We have a tools altar. We have a Buddha altar. We have limitless altars in our house because different things need different energy. You know, like a king like Mansa Musa, he don't want to be on there with your ancestors and deities. So you might not be able to connect with him amongst other people. So he might need his own space. Some deities are like that as well. You'll know. Go with your gut feeling. You know, again, Masa Musa isn't a deity or anything like that, but his consciousness still resides, meaning you can still tap into his consciousness and invoke his wealth energy if he chooses to work with you. That's with anyone living. But back to what I was talking about here, deities and your ancestors' altars. Here are some obituaries that I keep on my altar. If I don't have pictures of my ancestors, I go and get their, their obituaries and I put them on the shelf where all my deities reside. Now, what I do is a little different from other people. I keep all my ancestors on the lower level and I keep the deities on the top level. I have four different levels to my altar. My wife has eight. She has that many deities on her altar. Me, I just have four different levels. I got like nine deities that I rock with and I rock with them hard. But anyway, on my bottom level, level, there's my ancestors, and on my up top level, there's all my deities, and I have something that represents me, my higher self, though. I have a picture of me amongst my ancestors, you know, but I have a being on my altar that represents my higher self, the part of me that will never enter the earthly realm, the part of me that watches over me, guides me, you know, the part of me that I talk to when I need guidance. You know, some people... They think that they can only reach out to higher aspects like deities, higher divine beings to get help. No, there was a time in Kemet, Egypt, and Africa where they didn't have any deities. They had to rely on their selves and their higher selves to get the things needed and to get things done that they needed done. And you can do the same thing. So if you have an ancestor altar, don't think that it's not powerful. Yes, deities are more powerful than your ancestors. Yes because deities have always been here. They're nothing more than energy reserves. You know, they're like the wind. They flow within our reality, flow in and out of our reality. And they're nothing more than energy reservoirs or energy reserves that if you tether your consciousness up with them, you can tap into it. But you just can't say, hey, deity, I need some help, and they help you. It doesn't work like that. They may take lifetimes, months, days. You never know, it depends on your vibration, I guess, or it's their choice. It's ultimately their choice. One thing about the ancestors that most people don't realize is some of our ancestors can't even communicate with us. They haven't learned to communicate with us or they've been programmed in their earthly waking state to believe a certain way and they don't believe that they can communicate with us. And they may not even cross over. They may be roaming the earth. I have a gang of ancestors with me right now. We all do. At least one or two with us. At all times, watching you, guiding you, making sure you have all the things you need. They're looking out for you. They're setting you, setting you up for success and you don't even know it. You may be going to work one day and you just can't find your keys. I know I put my keys on the table. You can't find your keys. All of a sudden, you look around the house, you go back to the table, your keys are under something. You get in the car and you realize, dang, that was a 10 car wreck. I would have been in that pile up if I would have found my keys and left out on time. That's how the ancestors work. Deities now, what they do when you align yourself up with a higher divine force like a deity, 
they make miracles in your life. And miracles are nothing more than something that the human mind can't understand. Whatever it is, if the human mind can't understand it, more than likely it's a miracle. Okay? Well, that's something that deities do. They work miracles that way. So whenever you want, the human mind can only, you can only go so far with human effort. I have a lot of people saying, I don't need an altar, I'll just pray. A lot of your prayers don't even get answered because you're not praying correctly. I did a video on correctly praying, how you need to encapsulate it with a divine prayer, say your prayer, encapsulate it with another divine prayer, reach out to an angel, Gabriel's my choice of angel, to make sure my, my prayer gets where it needs to go, its desired destination. Go back and check that, in a, a, that, um, that video I did on correct way of praying. And that's fine. But a lot of your prayers don't get answered. Have you ever prayed for something and it didn't happen? More than likely, you didn't pray right. More than likely, you didn't pray right. But that's one reason why I put deities on my ancestor altar. Because I understand that I can only go so with human answer, effort and my ancestral effort. I need to align myself up with a divine force that will help me out. This is Quan Yin. She's on the altar. She's riding a dragon. Dragons are real. They're very magical beings. And Quan Yin, she's the truth. I love her. She's on my altar. So I say all this to say this, family. Whenever you set your ancestor altar up, start out with your ancestors first. Get a relationship with your ancestors. After about four to five months of doing that, you're going diligent, not just on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You're going every day. You're getting food and water every day, burning ancestor money. You're going to burn at least $10 billion a day because the amount counts. Don't just burn $1. And I'm not talking about earthly dollars that we use, our currency. You can when you burn money. It's like gold bullion on the other side. But when you burn Joss paper, hell notes, whatever you want to call it, make sure you try to go out and get the higher denominations, okay? Your ancestors know what you can give. You can't cheat spirit. So if you can go out and get your 10 billion, get your 10 billion and burn it every day. The more you burn, the more you dis dissolve your ancestral, negative ancestral financial karma. That's the main reason why you're burning ancestor money. When you burn your ancestor money, money just doesn't fall out the sky for your ancestors. Doors of opportunity open up for them on the other side, family. That's the importance and the reason why we burn ancestor money. And when you when you dissolve enough of your ancestral of ancestral financial karma, you also are dissolving yours. That's why they say the rich get rich and the poor get poor. When you dissolve all your financial karma, when you become the ambassador of your family, financial doors of opportunity will open up for you. I'm here to tell you, family, I quit my job. I've been winning ever since. I've been winning ever since because I'm diligent with my ancestral practices. Now, again, deities are nothing more than energy reserves that traverse our reality. You put a statue of a deity so that energy reserve can go into the deity that you have on your altar and look through the eyes of that statue that represents them. They're looking like, oh, look at that human. They're, they're taking care of their ancestors every day. You know what? I think I'm going to work with them. They showed enough humility. They're winning. They're working. They're burning ancestral money. They're saying divine prayers giving thanks and things like that, giving thanks to all the elements and spirit. They're trying to tether their consciousness up with me. Let me work with them. That's how it works. You don't want to do things for them and expect things in return. If they choose to help you, they help you. If not, stick at it. They will eventually, okay? Nothing I do, nothing I say, I can't prove any, any of my wins to you. This is my no system. This channel is nothing more than me divulging things that I've done to win. And I hope you choose. No, I implore you all to do the same. Try it out. Develop your own no system of winning. That's when you can become a winner. You won't be able to prove it to anyone else, but your light will change. You'll be out in public and people want to touch you. They'll see your light. They won't go know what to say to you, but they'll recognize divinity when they see it. Okay, family? Lastly, I want you guys to invoke winning energy. When you're at your altar, don't be like, oh, no. oh, spirits help me. Help the spirit. Don't be like that. Be high. You want to be have a high vibratory energy. Ancestors and deities love that. 
when you're on the frequency of winning, that's joy, happiness, love. You know what I'm saying? That's the energy of winning. Pessimistic thinking creates a bridge for negativity and low vibratory energy to flow into your reality. Kick that negativity a lot out the door. Cut poverty consciousness out of your mindset. Okay, family? This is nothing more than a high-tech re- high tech illusion that we're living in. Your altar will alter your reality. Use it. Be consistent with it. Don't do it once and be like, it didn't work, I'm done. Stay with it. I don't know anyone that's diligently working with their ancestor altar that's losing. Embrace being the ambassador of your family and watch your life change. So on that note, family, peace and love. I want to give a shout out to all the people that's been watching my videos, reaching out to me, asking me questions, getting consultations, donating. My boy, Vaughn, peace and love. My man, Robert, you know who you are, man. I appreciate that donation. Caesar, you always there for me. My little brother, Chris, Rob, who else? Anybody that's been donating, my boy Shashanti, Herb and Yogi, you know who you are. You know you're winning. I appreciate that, man. All those donations, all the help you guys have given me, you're fueling me, my cousin Brandon. You guys are fueling me to continue, continuously win. And the more I win, the more you win. Okay, family? So on that note, peace and love, family. Check me out. Check my blog talk radio show out, Twin Flame Radio. I got a gang of archive shows out there that will help you win. Take care of your ancestors. Get you some deities and start winning. So on that note, winning.